Hey, welcome to the Top Gun Show. Today, I'm kind of nervous. I got a really cool big dog on the show today, Jim Dellis, who is our Senior Vice President of the National Channel for TPX Communications. He also has a, a laundry list of accomplishments. He was at Time Warner for 10 years. He was the, uh, the Group VP of Partner Channels. Uh, at EXO, he was the VP of Sales for 12 years. Uh, AT&T Wireless, 10 years, uh, directing the sales and marketing efforts there. Uh, he's the three-time winner of CRN's Most Influential Channel Chiefs Award and the three-time winner again of the Channel Partners ch Top Channel Chief. So, I mean, I'm shaking in my boots, Jim, to have you on the show. Thank you for clearing time on your calendar, and welcome to the Top Gun Show. <laughs> hey, listen, thanks, Steve. Very glad to, uh, you know, to be on the cool Top Gun Show. Well, you, your life will never... You've had some great accomplishments, but your life, your life will never be the same after this. No, I'm sure of it. <laughs> okay, why don't we start with, I mean, with that, that uh, an amazing background, all running really national channel programs for kind of the leaders in the industry, what enticed you to, to join TPX three years ago? Well, yeah, it, it actually is a, an, an easy question to answer for me because it, uh, it mattered a lot what uh, TPX was doing uh, three years ago when I was, uh, you know, between the Time Warner cable experience that you mentioned uh, as part of my background and uh, looking for the next thing to do. You know, I, I didn't always start running channels. I was a direct sales rep, you know, carrying a bag, selling, selling wireless phones way back then. But over the course of years, I've done a lot of, of uh, channel development work and I've run two national channel programs. And when I was looking for an opportunity, actually a partner, uh, our largest partner at, at TPX uh, made a, a reference and uh, helped me get an interview with uh, Dick Jalkett, who was then the chief executive officer at Telepacific, back before we had sort of completed our pivot to what we are today. But I was interested in the company for a couple of really main and easy reasons. The first was the vision of who the company was trying to be. Uh, the first bit about it was that it, you know, the company was born uh, 20 over 20 years ago as a regional CLEC uh, in a time when that was really fun and popular to be a competitive local exchange provider. But the company was pivoting towards managed services and was offering UCAS services and managed uh, IT solution services. And, um, and I have always been doing things that were kind of the fun, new, interesting technologies that were growing businesses. So for me, after a few years, you know, doing cable, when cable was kind of new for business, uh, I made the jump over here to uh, be part of the TPX family and uh, sell managed services for businesses at a time when customers are really taking hold of it. And partners are now making a lot of money and shifting their own revenue streams to that same place. So that was number one. What we were doing was really interesting. But the second part was that there was a strategy about taking the regional SELEC type company and pivoting it to a national organization. So not just selling managed services, but going national. And so I was hired to develop uh, the business to grow nationally through partners exclusively. And so having, you know, kind of a, a greenfield to uh, get out to our partners, uh, both existing and some new partners and grow the business nationally was very exciting. Yeah, that's a great answer, man. I mean, it parallels why I joined TPX as well a couple, couple of months ago. And as you know, since I've joined, all, all of it's hit the fan. I mean, you know, Dick Jolkett, who we know and love, is, is no longer the CEO. He's replaced by Joe Casolino. Um, Ken Bisnoff, who I think the entire industry knows and loves, is no longer at TPX. Um, Greg Thiexton, who I replaced as a sales director in the West, is no longer at TPX. And, and that, now the virus has hit. But, you know, other than that, <laughs> you know, it's business <laughs> as happened. usual. I, I know, you know, when I joined, one of the things you and I talked about was let, let's get you, especially get you introduced to the West Coast partners because of the, of the loyalty and longevity that the West Coast folks, sales partners had towards uh, Ken Bisnoff and Dick and Greg, you know, and then the virus hit. So it's, it's hard to get you out and about. So I'm going to give you the opportunity right now. What do you want to tell the sales partners of TPS, TPX, especially those on the West Coast who've yet to meet you? Yeah, so, you know, and that, and that is true. Obviously, I don't know every partner in the, in the industry. Uh, after doing this 
you know, as a national channel leader for uh, 16 or so years, uh, I know many of the of our community. Even if I hadn't had you know direct responsibility or interactions with you uh, in this company, many of you I have at, at at other places that I've worked. But if I haven't worked with you recently, uh, or if I uh, you know haven't worked with you ever, then you know I guess I'd tell you a couple things. Uh, I'd love to get to, a. I'd love to get to know you. Uh, it, certainly in our West Coast, in my new responsibility, I'm in charge of the national channel operation for TPX. Our mission is the same: continue our growth. In, uh, in, our, in our strategic product set, our UCAS services, our managed IT solutions. So our mission is the same. I would want you to know that that is the mission. I also want you to know that um, right now, even in, with the new changes, we, we call ourselves TPX 2.0 now. We are led by a new private uh, equity firm. Uh, Joe Casalino, whose name you mentioned, is our, our uh, chairman of the board and interim CEO. I have a brand new boss by the name of Greg Daly, the first ever chief revenue officer for TPX. I mention that because these leaders and our brand new private equity firm, Cirrus Capital, are very bullish on the channel and they know the strategy that took TPX and brought us to where we are today and they wanna help us accelerate it. Uh, the, the leaders of this company, uh, that includes you, that includes me, that includes Greg Daly, that includes Joe Casalino and the cast of of really thousands that work at TPX, understand what it takes to be a great provider of customers in this new world, in this environment, and we know how to do it through partners. So if you don't know us, if you haven't given us a try, I would challenge you to give us a try. You're gonna like the kind of company we are, you're gonna like the kind of service that we provide customers and the way we do our business with you. So that's what I would want everybody to know, and, and we want a chance to tell you about us. That, that's a great message, man. You summed it up so well, so well. So you talked about TPX 2.0. My last business question for you, Jim, is look into your crystal ball. Uh, three years from now, what does TPX communications look like? Man, you know, so I think that um, in some ways, I hope that we look like a, a better picture of the realization of what I just described. You know, in some ways, I don't want us to be, I don't think that we're gonna be wildly different than we are today. What I think though, is that we are gonna be kind of, uh, we're gonna be recognized uh, much more in depth by many, many more partners. All those of you that I haven't met, you know, you I think are gonna understand a lot more about who we are. I would tell you that TPX today is already an industry leader in many categories. You know, we've got a best in class partner channel. We have best in class customer service. I would challenge any partner who wants to take care, good care of a customer that our customer experience at install is the best in, in the industry. But that isn't just enough. In three years from now, I think we are just going to be much, much bigger. We're going to be even better than I just described in terms of our quality. And we're going to be stronger. We're already a strong company with Cirrus. We're, we're a why we have a better balance sheet today. They're ready to put more into us. And in three years from now, we will have either made acquisitions or grown internally or both. So our company will be bigger. I think that we will be more well known in two or three years from now about what really is our sweet spot, which is if you have you know, mid-market type customers, multi-location type customers, customers who want all of their stuff managed by a single throat to choke, whether it's Access or UCAS or, or what we call the MSX a product suite. We do all that. I think it's going to be obvious to the industry and to our customers that we are a world-class leader in those categories. So in three years, Steve, that's going to be a, a much better known uh, uh, type of a thing that it might be today. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, a, that's, that's great. And I experienced it as a sales partner at Top Speed Communications. When I got to TPX and I saw all behind the curtain, all the teamwork and the, the, the people that are dedicated to the customer. Now I know why the customer experience is rated so highly at TPX. So yeah, I agree with you in three years, it'll be what you see today on steroids for sure. So, hey, Jim, you know, we, we, you're a big fan of the Top Gun show. I, I know you know that there are millions and millions of people watching this. Tell, tell the millions and millions of viewers a little known fact about Jim Dellis. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I, I Listen, I struggle with this because I knew that you would ask that question, Steve. And, and I think I've mentioned to you before, even in our, you know, in our daily work environment, that 
I'm just not that interesting, man. And so <laughs> I, I, I have no idea what maybe I would tell you about. But so while it might not be particularly interesting, I'm going to share a little bit here about something that, uh, you know, something personal that's interesting for me. Uh, at least, uh, at least it's something that I do in my spare time. My, uh, my, my wife is an art historian. When we vacation, we go to art museums. And uh, while I didn't used to love that, in fact, that's part of the important to this story. I didn't used to love that. Now I just love making a destination vacation spot based on what cool museum is on our bucket list. So when we are done vacationing, I started getting on my iPad and doodling and kind of recreating some of the famous art, trying to just copy it. That was my spare time, my therapeutic time. And, uh, and Steve, at the, and so as of this moment here, I've now started my own little collection of my own digital art that I've done. So do you want me to show it to you? Yes. yes. I'll, show, I'll, show you, I'll, show you, I'll show you a couple. So listen, for those of you that uh, think that are, you know, this is stupid, don't laugh at it. But, um, but I won't know you're laughing at it, so I guess it won't matter, will it? Okay, I'm going to show you just a couple of these. Like I say, these are just things that I've, that I've seen and then copied. Here's my, here's my Van Gogh. That's my flowers for Van Gogh. Very nice. Here's my, my, my Nighthawk, Edward Hopper, Art Institute of Chicago. Anyway, here's my, here's my Monet that I've done. Holy cow. Little Japanese, Japanese bridges or some, whatever that one's called. Anyway, Steve, that's my hobby. Not particularly interesting, but it's what I do on Sunday nights or you know, when I'm trying to just wind down. Well, thanks for giving us a glimpse into the real Jim Dallas. And I am honored and proud to be working with you, Jim, as I am with Greg Daly and Joe Cozzolino. I'm excited about our future. And uh, I thank you for being on the Top Gun Show. Thanks for having me, Steve. Awesome. All right, awesome. Thanks for watching. Take care. Take care.